return on investment. The term is actually self-explanatory. It's often called ROI and is used in used as a key measure of performance in several areas. Anyway, let us quickly understand this first. The return on investment, also called the accounting rate of return, is equal to income of a business unit divided by the investment of a business unit. Income divided by the investment. Investment of a business unit is the fixed assets net of depreciation plus the net worth in capital. Current assets minus current liabilities plus if there are any leased assets which are being used, mind you, to generate this income. Clear? Yeah. So simple students, return on investment. What is your return? Your operating income, the profit that you make. Income is the operating income unless otherwise noted, right? Income divided by the investment. What is your investment? The money you put in the particular venture. Investment for a business unit would be the fixed assets and current assets minus current liabilities. We take the net working capital. If there are assets which we have taken on lease and which are being used to generate this operating income, um, this income then that would also be considered okay income is operating income but remember students we take an annualized figure if income is for less than one year then we take a one year figure see for example if income for seven months is seven hundred thousand now we can't divide seven hundred thousand by the investment what do you would take annualized income the income for one year would in that case be seven hundred thousand is for seven months for one month, it would be 100,000. Into 12 months, it would be 1.2 million dollars. Is it clear? That is what we would take as the operating income if we were to compute the return on investment. We are taking it for a year and express it uh, <coughs> as a percentage on investment. Followed, so when you take operating income, take it for a whole year. Return on investment, very simple to remember, right students? Profit divided by investment in the business. That's your return on investment. Return on investment, self-explanatory. Now, this is a very popular measure of profitability combining costs, revenues and investments. It's a key measure. If you're making investments in the market, what is your return on investment? You can check that. Return on investment, of course, may be computed for all businesses, maybe for the organization as a whole, for the subdivisions, yes or no? <clears throat> for the efficiency of the manager to check how well he is utilizing, how efficiently he is utilizing the resources to generate returns. Correct? The ROI can be compared with the cost of capital. What is the cost of capital? This is something which we will learn in part 2 actually. The capital that we have, maybe we have shareholder funds, maybe we have loan funds, there is a cost of that funds. If we think the cost of that funds is 6%, that, that can be computed in some way, 6%, then as long as the return that we are getting on a new investment is more than that 6%, it would add to the profits. Yes or no? So an organization can compare the ROI with its cost of capital to determine whether the business segment should be continued, should be sold off, should be discontinued, whatever decision you want to do. Clear? So this is a very critical, very key measure, popular measure of profitability. It combines costs, revenues and investments. It's used to evaluate performance, efficiency of manager. And you can compare the ROI with the cost of capital to decide what to do with a particular business segment. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's take an example, students. Let's say one company has four divisions. We've divided it as north, south, east, and west division. Look at the operating income of each of these divisions. North division minus five thousand. This is fifty, one twenty thousand, and two fifty thousand. Obviously, I prefer the west division with the highest operating. Yes or no? Prima facie, when I'm looking at whole numbers like this, this it, it's 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 in an ascending order actually. The north is suffering losses. South has made a nominal amount of profit. East division has made much more, but West division has made the most. Has made 
very good profits. Now I'm happy with the results of your estimation. But then, then let us look at the net assets. What is the investment which has been made in order to generate this income? If you look at that, you get 75,000 in the North Division, 600,000 in the South Division, 1 million for the East Division, and 4 million for the West Division. Follow the net assets. Okay, this therefore even the assets have actually increased. So if I may say, while while South Division has made a profit of only fifty thousand, they have employed net assets of six hundred thousand. East Division one twenty thousand, but they have employed net assets. So to make it comparable, we now look at return on investment. When I look at the return on investment, that is minus 5,000 by 75,000 into 100 gives me a return of negative minus 6.67%. This, of course, I'm not considering. 50 by 600,000 gives me a return of 8.33%. 120 by 1 million, this gives me 12%. And the West Division, 250 by, by 4 million, this gives me 6.25%. B. Look at this. Which one would you prefer? If I look at the ROI, I prefer the one with the highest ROI, which is the East Division. What, what does this mean? Are you following the students? East Division has a better ROI. West Division has total profits more. So, what, what is to be my conclusion here? Now, ROI measures the efficiency with which the resources have been used. While West Division has made a profit of 250,000, they needed to use investments worth 4 million. But East Division used just one fourth of that amount, one fourth of that amount, and they have generated a revenue of 120,000. Maybe, maybe in other words, if I say it looks as if, if East Division were given four times this investment, maybe their operating income would be four times this, that is nearly 500,000. Yes or no? That's 480,000. This is only 250. West Division was able to utilize its investments only to generate 250,000. Looks as if East Division could have doubled those profits had they had the same kind of resources at their disposal. Are you following? So East Division is the is the most efficient as we go with the most efficient with the highest ROI. Is it clear students? Are you following the difference? So it's not only to look at West Division has made huge profits but they had a huge investment. They had enough resources to generate that kind of revenue, that kind of income. East Division with far less uh, resources uh, investment has generated an operating profit of 120,000. So the manager here is far more efficient. The, the resources here have been used far more efficiently. Followed? Are you following the measure students? Can you quickly compute an ROI from this information? Come on, two minutes. The working capital is 31,500. General administrative expenses are 37,500. Net sales, 2 million. Average plant and equipment, 887,500. And the cost of goods sold, 1,762,500. What is your return on investment? What is my return is operating income, right? Divided by the investment in the business. <coughs> what is my sales? This is my operating income. Sales is 2 million. Sorry. Sales minus cost of goods sold 1762 500. Deduct this. Deduct the general and administrative expenses 37,500. So this is sales. This is your cost of goods sold. And this is your uh, general administrative and general and administrative expenses. Yes or no? Clear? What do you get? If you subtract, you will get operating income 200,000. Now, what is your business? Uh, what is your what is your uh, investment in business? 
working capital plus that is 31,500 plus plant and equipment that is equal to <coughs> Is it uh, 1.2 million students? 887,500 plus 312,500. Yeah, it's 1.2, 1.2. So <coughs> your <coughs> your net operating uh, the, the 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 ROI return on investment would be operating income by investment 200,000 by In 200 equal to 16.67%. Clear? Clear students? Okay. Of course, the return on investment may be computed for a short term or a long term, for a month, quarter, year, or for a long term. But remember, students, if you're investing in a project, you will generate profit for five years, for eight years, for ten years. In such a case, for a long term measure of return on investment, it is better to use a what is called a discounted cash flow model. Model. So we we find out the present value of the return and then arrive at the uh, return on investment. So for a long term thing, it is better remember to use a discounted cash flow model. <clears throat> oh, how can the ROI be improved? How do I improve my ROI. What do I do to sales, to expenses in order to so should sales go up, higher the ROI better better it is. The ROI will increase if sales go up, right? If expenses come down. If both were to go up, if sales and expense were to go up in the same proportion, mind you, if they go up in the same proportion also ROI will increase. Let's look at an example. Suppose you have sales of 100, expense of 80, therefore operating income is 20, right? 100 minus 80, 20. Let us take and assume your investment is 200, then ROI is 10%. I'm just taking simplistic examples, students. Just look, look, so that you understand this relation. If sales and expense increase by 20%, let's say, so sales will become 100 plus 20%, that's 120. Expenses will become 80 plus 20%. 20% 20 of 80 is 16. So 80 plus 16 will become 96. Therefore, 120 minus 96, the operating income would be 24. Return on investment would be 24 divided by 200 into 100. 12%. Look, the ROI has increased. Yes or no? ROI has increased. So if the sales and expenses increase in the same proportion, also the ROI will Will you remember the students? So in an exam also, this question has been asked before. So if <coughs> sales and expense both increase and you do not really understand what it is, you cannot remember, you quickly work out with a simple example like this and see whether it's increasing or not. Clear? Now, <coughs> what should happen to the investment for the ROI to increase? So the investment reduces also the, the ROI will increase. Because the denominator decreases. Yeah. Return on equity. Return on equity is net profit after tax divided by shareholders' equity. So the net profit which belongs to the shareholders after the taxes, after even preference dividend, if any would be computed after deducting the preference shareholders dividend because only the balance available is for the equity shareholders would be available for the equity shareholders. Shareholders equity could be equity share capital plus accumulated profits. So sometimes instead of computing the ROI, we may compute the ROE or sometimes they compute the ROA, return on total assets. Dear students, so when it's ROE, it's the net profit. Don't take just the operating income. Remove the tax, <coughs> interest, whatever. Net profit after all the taxes divided by shareholders. 